speakers are missing, so uh, still we'll uh, like to speakers to keep on time uh, uh, six minutes, and we expand on the discussion part if if there is interest. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to myself give a, a short presentation of adjacent segment uh, disorder, uh, kind of a controversial area in spine surgery. Adjacent segment degeneration, is it, is it fact or fiction? Uh, I'm going to address, I think it is a fact, in fact. Uh, I don't think it's fiction. But the importance may be not that great. That's going to be the, uh, the bottom line. I'm going to try to show that. It's much debated, but it's poorly demonstrated by scientifically valid methods. Uh, and the importance of the of ASD on outcome is is uh, poorly demonstrated too. Uh, it occurs in five percent up to hundred percent after lung refusion, according to uh, many studies. Uh, but there is also a number of studies showing no uh, a adjacent segment deterioration. And this is uh, typically in studies of anterior lumbar fusions, in ALIFs, which seems to be somewhat protective against uh, uh, adjacent segment deterioration. Also, in the good Finnish studies on uh, long-term follow-up of spondylolisthesis patients, they have, they have seen no uh, uh, ASD at all. So it seems like if you fuse patients at a young age, it's not the same thing as if you fuse adults. The clinical relevance is, is, uh, is uh, discussed a lot in many, many papers. There have been no correlation between the radiological ASD and the clinical uh, situation. In a recent paper by Anand Jivala, this year in Spine, they looked at age, gender, diagnosis, the length of the fusion, sagittal alignment, and, uh, and the lumbosacral fusion, L5S1, and could not find an increased risk of ASD with these uh, different uh, variables, which has been discussed earlier. Particular length of fusion has been stated as a clear risk factor for. Uh, adjacent segment problems. But the, uh, the literature is, as always, a little bit divided in this paper from Australia. They looked on 1,000 cliffs with a mean follow-up of five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, 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 they looked at the, in the cases who have done 10-year follow-up, single level uh, frequency of ASD, 16%. After two level fusion, 31 percent. After three level fusion, 40 percent. Clearly indicating that the longer fusion, the more stress you put on the adjacent segment, and the more ASD you, you do get. Uh, the only uh, randomized controlled trial on the occurrence of ASD was uh, done by my group, and we published on, on, on these patients uh, a number of times in adult ischemic spondylolisthesis, posterior lateral fusion with CD instrumentation, without instrumentation, and a, a comparison group uh, which did exercise for 12 months. And these were followed for a minimum of 10 years with an average of 12.6 years. And what we did, we measured the, the disc height on the level above the fusion. We measured it in a couple of different ways. This is the key slide in my presentation. I think it proves, I think the slide actually proves that ASD does exist. If you look at the slide, and this is the disc height uh, uh, at at least 10 years follow-up. In the conservative group, it went down 15%. In the fusion group, it went down, it went down 1%. Uh, sorry, and in the fusion group it went down 15 percent, which is clearly a significant difference. Uh, if you look at only the posterior disc height, it went down 11 percent in the conservative group and 30 percent in the fusion group, clearly showing that the fusion did in fact uh, uh, affect the, uh, the disc height at long-term follow-up. 
we also use, use the uh, UCLA grading scale of, uh, of uh, generation. They still use it today. It's published a couple of years ago. Normal one, decrease in this kite two, osteophytes three, sclerosis four. And in fact, this is what we found in the exercise group. Everybody was normal. None of them had a, 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 a decrease according to the USL gradient. Whereas the fusion group, 39 had a grade 1, 11 grade 2, 12 grade 3. So it seems like uh, uh, very clearly that uh, it, it does exist. Actually, we did not observe ASD after exercise slash natural history because it's, of course, natural history in this exercise group. They did some exercises for a year, but they did, you know, over 10 years with nothing. Pre-treatment, this is this kite before treatment. This is 14 years later. And this is what we typically saw. If you measure it, we could see, you know, a very slight decrease, particularly in the posterior disc kite. But by eyeballing, which is the UCLA scale, they look strikingly similar after long-term follow-up. Totally reduced posterior disc height was only seen in the fusion group in four patients, which is 6%, as you can see in, in this case here. Pre-treatment, 14 years later, the disc height uh, almost totally gone. Another patient's pre-op, the disc height here, pre-op, 13 years later but only in four patients out of uh, something like 76%. Exercise group, nobody had this development. So the percentage of ASD uh, really depends on how you define it. If you define it at the complete uh, reduction of posterior disc height, you get 6%. If you any DDD according uses, you come up with 38%. So talking about DDD, you have to clearly define what you mean could be quite different. So what about does it affect outcome? Uh, in fact, we looked into the data very, very carefully, and, and depending on how you defined ASD, you came up with different answers. If you define ASD with some slight deterioration of this kite, it did not affect outcome at all. In fact, you had to define it very s severely. Uh, I won't go into uh, it how we did that, but it was minus two standard deviation of the normal de degeneration. It's quite severe ASD. Then we did, in fact, find a difference that 49% were much better without ASD compared to only 11% with ASD. It was not statistically significant for pain, osteoporosis score, and disability rating index, but it was, you know, suggesting a difference. So severe ASD, yes, seems to affect outcome, but not the, not the more common, milder forms. Risk factors for uh, adjacent segment. We had a surprising finding. Uh, actually, we found that the patients with laminectomy, uh, 22 out of 47 with laminectomy uh, developed ASD compared to only two out of 16 without laminectomy. So it seemed that it may not be only the fusion. It may be also the posterior tension band structure disruption, because with an uh, uh, isthmic, you know, you remove the whole lamina, and the whole uh, posterior tension band is removed. Quite a striking difference in the frequency, suggesting it may not be the fusion itself, which is also goes hand in hand with the observation that ALIFs done uh, selective only ALIFs, you do not get it. It's not the fusion. Maybe it's something else we do to the posterior structures, like removing tension band. Uh, we had no difference with half of the operated patients were without screws, randomized. No difference whatsoever in the frequency. So it's not the screws themselves who uh, 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 irritates the upper uh, level. Uh, a couple of papers, does ALIF only protect from ASD? A couple of papers saying yes. Uh, so there is some, uh, these are papers with uh, uh, Fraser from Australia, uh, Rob Fraser, 
uh, who's done very many uh, ALIF studies, and he, he claims that it's protective for ASD. And what about 360? The Danish study, they did ALIF plus PLF, uh, the Cordybinger study, ALIF plus uh, uh, posterior lateral fixation with screws compared to PLFs only. They had the same frequency. Again, maybe indicating if you do add PLF to the ALIF, it's not protective. Uh, we found the same thing uh, comparing posterior lateral fusion non-instrumented with T-lifts, and we found actually the same disc height reduction in both studies. It's 135 patients with DDD, with or without sciatica, randomized to PLF or T-lifts, two-year follow-up, 97%. Uh, this is what we did in the TLIF group. Try to create low doses at the TLIF level. And these are, these are the data. Showing very clearly that the TLIF group, they lose something like 31% of, uh, of the disc height at two years. And the same results for the PLF group. Again, showing that even if you stabilize the anterior disc with, uh, with a T-lift thing, it does not protect from adjacent segment uh, problems. Few cases, we did four or five, and, and it did not, we could not show any effect on the segment below. Again, maybe indicating it's not the fusion, but maybe the posterior structure, because at the level below, you don't, you don't disrupt that man as, as much uh, as the one above. Uh, I was kicked out in the, somewhere in the middle of it. Oh, sir. Thank you. Uh, Advance it to uh, like slide 20 or something. Can you advance it to something like slide 20 or further on? Maybe we just move into the uh, the first presentation. I, 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 you know, my meaning was to show a uh, couple of patients, but I think we move into the your presentation and we go to the first presentation. <laughs>